the Roaring Nineties. Who would have thought that football clubs would be glorified by Qatari princes' consortiums? That was as implausible as picturing Duncan Ferguson enjoying tofu fritters while singing pop diva tunes. Back then, fans dreamed of a quirky chicken farmer or a cigar-smoking used car salesman swaggering into their club, pockets bulging with cash. This was the reality that Darlington, a fourth-tier club, woke up to in 1999, when the off-kilter local businessman, George Reynolds, claimed ownership. Reynolds was no stranger to the clink, having done time for detonating store safes with explosives. However, by the time he infiltrated Darlington, George was a changed man. Having accumulated a fortune of £260 million from selling chipboard kitchen cabinets, he even shared a neighbourhood with the Spice Girls, far from Darlington. But George had grand plans. He envisioned Premier League football and a 25,000-seater stadium, a daring plan given the usual crowd was barely 2,000. Fast forward £20 million and behold, a brand new stadium boasting marble automated restrooms and gold-plated faucets. In his own humble way, he christened it the Reynolds Arena. The Sunderland-born countertop magnet quickly rose to fame, even landing a spot on the Oprah Winfrey show, where he was celebrated as the world's top boss for settling his employees' mortgages and gifting them shiny new Mercedes. But George's generosity didn't stop there. He attempted to sign Paul Gascoigne for a staggering fee, and after that plan went south, he aimed for Faustino Asparilla. He enticed the Colombian with a cut of the gate receipts in a swanky flat. Despite the former Newcastle strikers' initial agreement and a celebratory parade before a Carlisle match, he backed out and took off to the Middle East. Darlington inaugurated the new stadium in 2003, but with 23,000 vacant seats each week, the club found itself in administration. Around this time, George had a strained relationship with the local press. He took his revenge on Northern Echo editor Peter Barron after a controversial coverage. If you're going to write headlines about me, I'll write headlines about you, George roared down the phone line before planting a massive billboard outside the Reynolds Arena. Each week, a new headline in colossal letters by George graced the billboard. Sack Baron. Baron is a liar, paired with a Pinocchio snapshot, and his masterstroke, Baron is gay. In another episode, George, unaware that Baron and his family were on vacation, stood outside Baron's house hollering insults through the letterbox. Once, he even dared one of Baron's colleagues to a wrestling match in the town square. The scenario took a dark turn in 2004 when George was apprehended by the police, a suitcase stashed with £500,000 found in his car trunk. He soon found himself back in prison, this time for tax evasion. Upon his release, George settled into a quiet life, operating an e-cigarette shop in Durham. Cigarettes are disgusting, he confessed to a journalist. But this isn't smoking. It's like boiling a kettle. 